All right. Uh, assignment number 11. Take out a piece of paper. And read number one first to yourself. Press pause. Then we'll look at it together. So uh, you've read it, right? So the equation here, I'm going to write down. This equation describes <coughs> the number of gallons of sewage entering in from zero to four. And then treated sewage is removed from the tank at a constant rate of 645. So the remove part, is there a, if I had an equation for remove part, it would just be this. It's at that rate. So entering and removing. Part A, the tank is empty at zero. How many gallons of sewage enter the treatment from zero to four? So to know how much has entered, you take the rate and you integrate it. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 4, and we don't have to write all of that down again. And then type that in your calculator from 0 to 4. Press pause and see if we still get the same answer. To the nearest gallon. So to the nearest gallon, I get 3,981 gallons. Part B. How many, no, from 0 to 4, at what time T is the amount of sewage in the treatment tank the greatest to the nearest gallon, and what is the maximum amount of sewage in the tank, and justify your answers. So I'm going to create another equation where you have the amount entering in and then subtract the amount removing. So I'm going to plug in 850 plus 715 cosine. And I'm going to make it equal, subtract 645. These are already derivatives. And I'm going to make it equal to 0 to find the critical values. So use your calculator. I would graph and find where it's equal to 0. And the two answers are 2.309 and 3.559. So I would graph this and see what the zeros are and make sure your window goes from like 0 to 4. And then you should get those answers. We can look at how to use your calculator at lunch if you need to, too. So those are your critical numbers. So then we're going to integrate from 0 to 2.309. And we're going to integrate the equation going in minus what's going out. And see what that answer is. So press pause. Remember, type that in for E at T. And you get... 1,637.178 gallons. That's how many there is. Now we're going to do the same thing for 3.559. So type it in again. You just press enter and just change that number to 3.559. And you get 1,002. 1228.520. We already know the amount at the beginning is zero. The amount at the end, so the ends, a four, so already at four, there's 398 coming in, minus four times. 645, because every hour is 65, and that number is 1,401. So what's the maximum number at which one? And it's right here. 
So this is the maximum amount of sewage that's in. But we have to do the endpoints in each critical number we tested to see at which point you had the most in it. Part C. From 0 to 4, the cost of treating the raw sewage that enters the tank at T is that, 0.15 minus 0.02T, dollars per gallon. To the nearest dollar, what is the total cost of treating all the sewage that enters the tank during the time interval from 0 to 4? So the amount that's again entered from 0 to 4, we did that up here, 3,981. You just multiply it, 3,981. And we need to integrate the rate of the cost. And then type this in, and you get the cost $474. All right, question number three. The rate of consumption of cola in the United States is given by this equation where S is measured in billions of gallons per year. So S is a rate. And then part A say the consumption doubles every five years and the consumption rate at the beginning of 1980 was six billion per year. Find C and K. So if it doubles, when I divide by C, that's going to be doubling. And it doubles every five years. So we're going to solve that equation to begin with. So I'm going to solve that equation. Every five years doubles every five years. All right, let's solve this. Menu algebra. Solve two equals E to the five K. Then we're going to solve for K, comma K. You get point three one point three eight six. So the equation is going to be your C is your initial amount, which they said was doubles and the consumption rate well the beginning amount was six billion right so that's what C is going to be and then the number we just came up with which is point one three eight and now we have an equation right so that's what C. C equals 6 billion and K is 0.138.
Find the average rate of consumption of cola over a 10-year period. So then we're going to do average goes from 0 to 10 of that equation we just came up with divided by 10 minus 0 or 10. So we're going to type that in our calculator. So do that with me. Integrate. and you get 12.934 C use the trapezoidal rule So to use the trapezoidal rule to integrate from 5 to 7, this equation, four equal subdivisions. So the width is going to be top subtract bottom divided by 4. That's going to be 1 half. So it's going to be the formula starts with 1 half and the width is 1 half. And then we plug in 5, 5 and a half, and so on. Double the next one. Now it's going to be five and a half plus double the next one. Now it's going to be six plus double the next one. That's going to be six and a half. And then the last one, which is seven, but we don't double. So we start with the right and follow the pattern. We don't need to simplify it, and that's a good answer. D, using correct units, explain the meaning of that in terms of cola consumption. So it's the total amount consumed of cola in billions of gallons from what year to what year? From n So if it started in 1980, that would be 85 to 86, or 85 to 87. Done. All right, number three is done. Number six. Oil is being pumped continuously from a certain oil well at a rate proportional there. So I recognize that when you solve this diffie Q, K times Y, it's what we just did. That's what it's going to equal. Initially there were 1 billion, that's what C is, and then six years later there was 500,000. So you're going to use your calculator and you're going to solve for K. So press pause and solve for K. If you did it right, it'd be negative 0.116. So now you have this equation. At what rate is the amount of oil in the well decreasing at what rate when there are 600,000 gallons of oil remaining. So we're going to make it equal to 600,000, the now we have to do the rate which is this. So the rate 
k, we just found g negative 0.116, and we multiply it times the y value they just gave us, which is 600,000. And so we answer that, and you get negative 6,9314.718 gallons per year. When you multiply that through, that's part B. Part C, in order not to lose money, at what time T should oil no longer be pumped from the well? So it'll no longer be profitable when there are fewer than 50,000 gallons remaining. So we got to go back to this equation. And then y is going to be that amount, which is 50,000. Then use your calculator and solve for t. And it's 25.932. And you have your answer. All right, over halfway there. Next. All right, read number three. The rate at which water flows out of a pipe is given there as a table. And they said first use a midpoint Riemann sum. So this one's going to be a pretty basic one, right, to begin with, which is good. So we're going to use that table to do a midpoint Riemann sum. So first of all, we need to know four divisions. So it's 24 take away 0 divided by 4. So that's 6 is each width. That's to begin with. And then a midpoint. So 0 to 6, the middle is 3. So the first one goes 0 to 6. So the middle is 3. So I use 10.4. Just a rectangle. The next middle would be 11.2. The next middle would be 11.3. The next middle would be 10.2. And there are your four rectangles. You don't have to simplify it. Oh, the units would be gallons. And explain the meaning of your answer. So over 24 hours, that many gallons of water of water flowed out of a pipe. So it tells you how much when you integrate. So over 24 hours, that amount of gallons of water flowed out of the pipe. Next, is there some time t from 0 to 25 where the derivative of that is equal to 0 and explain your answer? So this is going to be part of that a rock equals i rock. So is there an average rate where it would be equal to zero? So I'm looking for two y values that are the same. So what are the two val y values? So I see 10.2, 9.6 and 9.6, yay. So if I went and found the average rate of change from zero to 24, the A rock from zero to 24 would be 9.6 take away 9.6 over 24, which is equal to zero. So there must be at least one moment where the instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change from zero to 24. So you'd mention the MVT. And that there must be one moment where the instantaneous rate change must equal zero. 
All right, part C. The rate of water flow can be approximated by going 1 over 79, 768 plus 23t minus t squared. Use key at Q and T to approximate the average water flow during the 24-hour period. So average would mean um, like average value from 0 to 24. That whole thing that was just given. And divide by 24. Use your calculator to type this in. And you get 10.784 on average gallons per hour. Or you can round up to 5. All right, last one, number six. Let V at T be the velocity of a skydiver after her parachute opens, her velocity satisfies this differential equation. So the derivative of velocity, that would be acceleration with the initial condition where the velocity, uh, the initial velocity is negative 50 because she's falling. Use separation, and we're going to solve this diffy Q in terms of T. So let's do that together. So I'm going to write down oops, the diffy Q. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to multiply by dt. I got to separate the variables. So I'm going to separate the variables by factoring out negative 2. This is going to make it easier. So when I divide, I have something easier to integrate. So I divide by v plus 16, and now I can integrate it. This is a logarithm, and that's just negative 2v and then plus c. And then to solve for v, I write it exponentially. Remember, I can write this, and then I can replace this with a separate constant. So I can just write v plus 16 equals c2 times e to the 2v like that. Where did I get my letters wrong? Sorry. I got one letter wrong. When you integrate that, that's a t. Uh, so just change that to a t. I was confused because I was trying to get v by itself. That's a t. And then to get v by itself, you would subtract 16. We do have a n to plug in. So when you plug in 0, the answer is negative 50. So when I plug in 0, e to the 0 is 1. So add, and I get 66. And so the velocity then would be negative 50 e to the negative 2t two, two minus 16. Wait a second. Yeah, sorry, it's negative 50. So if you add 16, haha, it'd be negative 34. This number is negative 34 minus 16. There it is. All right, part B says the terminal velocity is defined as the limit as t goes to infinity of v at t. Find the terminal velocity. So what's the limit as this goes to infinity of negative 34 e to the negative 2 t minus 16. Now, because we have a negative exponent, it might be easier to understand to put that negative exponent in the denominator and then recognize the bottom is more powerful than the top. So this is 0. So the uh, terminal velocity is going to be negative 16. And that would be feet per second. Part C. So that's the right end behavior. So eventually that's the speed it will eventually fall at. 
So the initial one was 50, but eventually over time it'll get closer and closer to negative 16. It is, it is safe to land when her speed is 20 feet per second. At what time does she reach that speed? So 20 is equal to negative 34e to the negative 2t minus 16. And then use your calculator, you know, algebra, solve, type it in, comma t, and you would get the answer. You should press pause and try it. Is 1.07 seconds. And you did it. All right, great job. Review on with me. Some were tougher, some were a little bit easier. All right, Mr. G Math, over now. Till next time.